Welcome to Prime Life. We call it Retirement 2.0. Leave each episode with tips and new ideas to help you navigate retirement in our new age. It's your time. Make it count. Hi, this is Paul Tyler, and welcome to another episode of Prime Life. Uh, Today, we're going to talk about one of the probably biggest challenges in taking care of an elderly parent, elderly uh, relative, uh, elderly friend, and that is managing their money and their finances. So I'm really looking forward to this call. Joseph, how are you? Doing great, Paul. Beautiful day. How about you? it is indeed, and Laura, uh, you you know this problem well as as I do. I think at this point. Yes, unfortunately, so. So I'm excited to hear from Elizabeth today and learn more. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Laura, uh, sorry, Mary, can you introduce our guest? I would be delighted to. I'd love to introduce Elizabeth Club, founder and CEO of My Flock. Elizabeth is building My Flock to empower families and take the financial friction out of caregiving. Elizabeth, tell us about yourself and what led you to create MyFlock. Sure. Thanks, Mary. And I'm very excited to be with you guys today and talk about MyFlock. Um, My background, my professional background, um, started in the corporate world um, in in marketing and innovation. And then I got into consulting also in innovation and strategy. And I worked with a bunch of different companies and large corporations And about 10 or 12 years ago, I started working in the aging space and got really interested in the space. So much need there, so much opportunity there. And at the same time, uh, my parents um, were getting older, which is wonderful, as we all are every day, I like to remind us. And um, I found myself in a position of um, a financial caregiver to my father. And that is something that happens often. It happens over time, and it is not something you um, necessarily recognize um, as it's happening. My father lived in New York, um, and he lived in his own home, which is where a lot of people want to stay as they get older. And um, and he lived in his community, was very active and in, as involved. And my uh, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, so I was remote and far away from him. And I, my sisters and I. There's three of us. Um, They're both physicians and they live in Connecticut and they wanted to help support him as well. Uh, My dad was living with Parkinson's disease um, as later in his life. And he also eventually became legally blind. So he had a lot of challenges, um, but was very engaged. He had a lot of people in his life who helped him, family like us, um, but also friends and neighbors. Um, He had been a professor, so former students. And we actually, um, for the last years of of his life, had a professional caregiver who lived with him. And um, my dad's solution on the money side of things, and I was on my father's accounts and all of those things, but my dad's solution for money on on finances on a regular basis for grocery shopping and things like that, when he was no longer able to ride his bike to the grocery store, for example, was to basically give anybody a checkbook. And that is not a good solution, would not recommend to your listening audience. Um, And it wasn't a good solution for him. Um, And he knew that. And he was living um, with anxiety and fear and stress, which is not unusual. And it was not a good solution for me because I, too, as his daughter, was um, living with anxiety and fear and stress. And so um, through that process, I realized that a lot of people go through this. And there really aren't good solutions for sort of daily living and expenses. And um, people, as they age, are more vulnerable for a number of reasons um, to scams, to financial exploitation, to all of those things happening. And um, my dad died in 2016. I was already working in the aging space. And I saw this huge problem with, um, with stress for caregivers, stress for older adults, stress for families and what it does to families. Um, and elder financial exploitation and fraud is an enormous issue. Um, there is um, the latest number that we have, and it's not well reported for a number of reasons, which I'm happy to talk about. The latest number that we have is about $114 billion a year is lost to elder fraud and financial exploitation just in this country. 
and people don't even report it as often as it happens. And so it's a huge problem, and that's what we set out to um, help be a part of the solution with MyFlock. So happy to be here to talk about it today. All right, I can jump in with the first question for you. You mentioned anxiety, fear, and stress, which are not good things to feel. No. Uh, with, was, were, were those coming out of a sense of loss of control, or was it fear and stress due to fraud, like where, or, or some other reason? Yeah, I, it's a great question, Joseph, because I think um, one of the things that gets in the way of families talking about money, and one of the things that we, um, on my flock, we try to, to talk about is the earlier you talk about money, the better it is. Um, and there's, there's, there is emotion around money. And so there's emotion, and every family is different, I've learned. You know, you think that people, that like, they're going to be like your family, they're not. Every family has a different history of money and so the 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 anxiety and fear and stress for for in my dad's case was he was afraid of being um, a victim of fraud um, and at the same time he had people in his life who he counted on um, and he needed and so that was very stressful for him um, and his his tendency my dad and I think uh, um, I know a lot of people as they get older their trust level goes up in people. They, there's an increased um, desire to see the best in people, which is a wonderful thing, but um, people who are going to take advantage of older adults also know that and take advantage of that. And so his stress was around being taken advantage of. My stress was around, I was so far away from him um, because of my dad's health conditions um, the, the primary thing was to keep him healthy and safe in his home and not having a solution around the money side of it um, and having him live in fear. That was one of my ongoing sadnesses, you know, as his daughter, that I could not, um, at the end of his life, he, he was living in fear, which is just, we, we shouldn't have a society where that has to be for for people at the, when they're nearing the end of their life. So there's so many different layers of stress. In my dad's instance, it wasn't a loss of control. My dad was very happy to have me involved, um, but, but it was the, the fear of getting um, taken advantage of. I so think, you mentioned trust. Yeah, go, go ahead, ahead Mary, Laura, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um, I was gonna say you mentioned trust, and and on the MyFlock site, you have a host of individuals as the advisors. Talk to us a little bit about the team that you built and the individuals and the roles that they serve to help build that that trust in your service. Yeah, so um, it might help if I give you a little bit of background on what the what the product is, um, because we are trying to solve. We're not trying to solve boil the ocean. There's a lot of different components of financial wellness. Um, we are trying to solve on the sort of frontest most end of the financial, which is um, which is the daily spending, the monthly spending on groceries and uh, errands and all of the things that people spend on an ongoing basis. And so MyFlock is um, a prepaid debit card based system. So it's a new account that sits on top of any other account. That's very important because um, oftentimes older adults and anyone doesn't necessarily want to change their financial relationships. They have had them for a long time. And they also don't want to reveal all their finances to their family in order to get help, right? And so um, if they want to have, I was on my dad's accounts, but if, they, if he didn't want me to have, be on his accounts, that was really the only way I could help him was to be on his accounts. My flock allows for people to get help and assistance without that. Um, and it's a, so it's a new account. And with that account, there's a series of prepaid debit cards. And those prepaid debit cards, um, the beauty of the debit card system is you can have very um, clear controls um, where the cards can be used, where they can't be used. And what, what, that, what our system allows for is really visibility into the spending. So, but we put the older adult at the center of, of, of the account. So they own the account. They're, it's an empowerment tool for them. And um, they can decide who they want on their MyFlock team, we call it. Uh, and then they have, we have other roles that are very specific. So in this instance, 
We have a role called a MyFlock lead. It would have been my father. We have a role called a MyFlock insider. I would have been his insider. I would have been that trusted person who helped him manage the account, who had all the same functionality over the account that he had, but I don't own the money, importantly. And another very important part of that role is a, a power of attorney is not necessary. Um, so a power of attorney is a big step because I could have made a bunch of different financial decisions on my dad's behalf. A power of attorney is not necessary for that role. And then underneath that, there's a series of sub-accounts that could have been used for Frank, his, his uh, caregiver who lived with him, friends and neighbors who helped, and then they could use those cards to help him run errands, do different things, but I would have been able to see what was going on, and they could only spend the money that was on that card and no more. So it really protects all the other finances, um, and it helps people engage in financial conversations earlier because it is not a taking away of agency. It's not a taking away of control. It's actually a giving control to an older adult and helping them um, maintain that independence and that, um, that agency at, over their money for longer and in an easier way. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. I, I guess one question I have um, for you there is you talked about how every family is different and every situation is different. Have you found um, anything like maybe one or two helpful tips that have helped people through these conversations that have made the transition easier for them? Yeah. So I think one of the things that we often talk about with helping people talk about things earlier, what happens now a lot in families is, um, one, they don't talk about it and then find out too late, right? It, that's, often the, that's often the instance. They find out too late. Mom or dad has been scammed of, you know, you know, tens or whatever thousands of dollars. And we've got to like go in as a family and take over. Right. And so not a good idea just because what happens then is, but it's a fear. It's a reactionary thing. What happens then is people just decide not, they're not going to tell their children because nobody wants to be, um, you know, money and car keys, right? It's very tied to sort of independence and all of the things that we are as people and as adults. And so one of the tips that we talk about a lot with people is start the conversation early and don't think you're going to have it once, right? It's not a one-off. It's a let's talk about this earlier and one of the things that are, we, we're very happy about is our platform allows people to have the conversations earlier because it's, it's more about empowering families um, and it's an empowerment tool versus a taking away. So one, one sort of tip is start it early and don't think it's going to be a one-time deal. Don't, and don't do it at Thanksgiving or Christmas. Not good. Like, don't think you're going to go in and just have the conversation and then it's done. It is starting to have those conversations. And one of the other things is how early can you start thinking about protecting what you've built? So are there times, are there stages in life when you're thinking about retirement, for example, when you're thinking about those inflection points, moving to a different place, planning for retirement, have those stages to say, let's think about what's the next stage going to look like and should we put things in place so we can help each other in a more effective way. And it really is helping each other. It's helping older adults, but it's also helping kids and family members. It's very stressful for, uh, Laura, it sounds like you've had some of this experience. It's very stressful. It takes a lot of time, right? And it take, it's very stressful to be in those situations and not have clear communication about it. So sort of key tips are earlier conversations and don't make it a big dramatic thing, you know, sort of ease into the conversations and very pr practice really um, uh, intentional listening because to Joseph's point, there's different stresses in different families and just be really cognizant of, of listening. Yeah. So how, how much of your product is the financial platform and how much of the product is helping coach those conversations to get them on the platform? Yeah, it's interesting because what we talk about our platform is it's a combination of digital. So we're applying the fintech technologies that are out there, right? That um, So we're applying digital solutions, 
but it really is a digital plus human um, human um, solution because um, people are involved. And so the people on the platform are the ones who are involved. And so the initial, the initial build of the platform, Paul, is a lot of it is the digital solution. But what we're learning along the way is, um, and we're, we are getting great feedback from people on the platform and, and consumers using the platform, is that we really need to augment that with the, um, and these are some of the ways you can talk about it. And these are some of the ways you can think about it. And these are the, some, of the, some of the things to look for in terms of protecting um, your, your family members. And by the way, elder fraud and financial exploitation, the latest numbers out from the government, it's skewing much younger. You know, it is like 25% of, I think, in 2021 was people, you know, younger than 50 because they're getting much more, much more crafty in terms of the, in terms of the, you know, using text and all of those things. So it really is all of us together. And the more we can talk about it together and have these conversations in terms of, I just got scammed yesterday and this is what happens and not shame and not embarrass and not blame. You know, Laura, that's another really important tip is no blaming, like no shaming and no blaming, um, really important because when you shame and you blame, then it shuts people down from having the conversations about it. Um, and I, I live this now with my mom. Um, you know, my mom calls me and she said, oh, I just talked to the nicest people from Apple and they're going to refund some money to me. And I'm like, oh, let's talk about it. And it happens to all of us. You know, it's a, it's a, um, and she, my mom's 86. She's, um, you know, she rides her horse every morning. She's very vital and she's working the polls today. You know, she's, but it happens to all of us and we shouldn't be embarrassed about it. We shouldn't be ashamed about it. We need to normalize. Uh, this is what's happening in our world right now. So they Elizabeth, are getting. No, go oh, go on, Mary. Thank you, uh, Elizabeth. You talked about s some of the things to look for. Can you expand upon that a little bit? In terms of in terms of fraud and financial yeah, and, and yeah, you know, as it relates to you know, you know, you were speaking about your mom, and that you kind of talked a little bit about that comment about. I talked to this nice person from, you know, the company and they wanted to refund me money. Like what are, that sounds like that may be a segue into the types of things that you look for uh, regarding uh, scamming um, for, for seniors. And that number you threw out earlier just blew me away, by is, the way. I know. I'm sorry. It is a little. <laughs> no, mindless. no. I know. I know. And it is, it is, um, it is very much, it all, it, it's, there are, you know, a list of the um, the types of scams and, and financial exploitation are uh, very long. Um, and what the things to look for and to listen for um, are changes, are different behaviors. And so one of the things that our platform allows is um, I'm, I'm my mom's my flock insider. So I can see, and she wants that. She wants sort of eyes on it. I can see what her spending is. Um, and that's one of the things our platform allows for. You can, you can sort of see what somebody's spending is. Changes or different behaviors um, are, are sort of an indicator. Um, and then something that is, there are people in, in terms of fraud and financial exploitation, and I experienced this with my father and all of us, people who try to sort of new people who build trusting relationships. Um, in some way is something to just ask questions about and new people who are become fast friends early um, is something to ask questions about and it's very delicate it's very um, it's very challenging because you want people to have expansive lives and you want people to have friends and you want people to have people in their life but there are people unfortunately in the world who know I mean who know that older adults control the majority of wealth in this country and uh, it's a very different world than it used to be 20, 30 years ago when people were relying on pensions and it was all managed, right? And you know this as much as anybody. And now there's a lot of self-management of those things. And so there's a lot that can happen and go wrong. And so the, the newness, the new things, the new ideas um, are something to just ask questions about. Um, and my mom, in that particular instance, 
by the way, it could have happened to me. You know, it could have happened to any of us, that one. And the, it was a, they charged me too much and they're going to refund my money. And I, she just mentioned it. And I was like, just listening for that. And we, and I did not say, mom, oh my gosh, what have you done? I was like, tell me more about what happened. And very much to her, like, this could have happened to me as well. And it could have. And sort of normalizing those conversations, really important. Um, and not shaming. And often right now, the tendency for all of us, because it's a, it's a, a protective thing, is it ends up coming across as shaming the victim or blaming the victim. Um, and it is also something, by the way, we're all going there, right? If we're lucky, we are all going there. And so that is a difficult thing for a lot of people to think about because we all think we're smarter. We all think it wouldn't happen to me. And guess what? It's going to happen. Right? And so the more we talk about it together, um, the better off we are. So, so I, I have a question. Your website, you've got a badge on your website that says, my flock is an AARP Innovation Labs portfolio company. Yeah. Tell us more. Yeah, yeah. We're very, we're very pleased about that badge. Um, so the AARP, it, everyone knows AARP, obviously. Um, and they have a wonderful innovation um, initiative uh, called the Innovation Lab. And they work with uh, startup companies who are working in the aging space. And you apply to get in, you actually pitch to get in. And um, they, AARP, decided several years ago that there's so much going on in innovation in the aging space and the longevity economy, uh, and they should be part of hosting that conversation. And so um, they put together this lab. We pitched to get in, and they curate exactly what you need as a startup at that time. And it's an eight to 12 week process. I can't remember which. Amazing um, process, amazing resources, wonderful people, all sort of dedicated to helping and empowering older adults to choose to live choose to choose to live as they choose to as they age. And we went through the program. And we graduated. We had a graduation ceremony. And now we are part of what's called the Age Tech Collaborative, which is a wonderful organization of companies that are startups like us. There are venture capital firms, a lot of people investing in the space. There are large corporations interested in the space. And there are um, labs and test beds um, in the space. And so it's this ecosystem of um, different kinds of companies interested in innovation in the um, in this longevity economy, and we are actually um, this sun this Sunday going out to Las Vegas with AARP. They're bringing out um, ten startups in the age tech space um, to the health conference, um, and we're going out as an AARP age tech portfolio company. Um, to to be at the health conference because one of the really interesting things is there's a lot of interest in what we're doing from the healthcare side. Um, financial health and physical health are really linked together, um, and so we are we are excited to be a part of that, um, and we're excited to have those conversations with the other people who are interested in those intersections. Um, and this financial health um, and financial wellness, both for older adults but it's also for caregivers. So financial wellness for working caregivers, people like us who are trying to have full-time jobs, but also help and support um, parents or grandparents at the same time. And it impacts, it impacts our health. Um, and there's data around that. Um, and the, the cost, the, the healthcare costs for caregivers is about 8% higher than for non-caregivers. They, and they, stop taking care of themselves because they're taking care of somebody else. And the, the cost of, to the health on older adults who are become the victims of fraud and financial exploitation, they're twice as likely to be hospitalized. And the cost to the healthcare system are much higher. And so there's a, just a number of different um, aspects involved around the connection between sort of health and financial wellness. 
So first, congratulations on graduation. Thank you. Uh, and have a great time. Have a great time at the conference. Yeah. Uh, I, I've used a similar product on the commercial side, you know, where a company can manage finances for the team yeah. and so forth. Yep. Can you describe for the listeners how your model works? Is there a fee? Or do you, how do you make money? Like, yep, yep, uh, sure, there is a fee. So we're, we're software as a service. Um, and so there is a fee for the software. Um, we are, and the model is, um, our, we're, we're doing some direct-to-consumer business. So we're having some people come on the platform now. But our business model really is a business-to-business-to-consumer model and so in um and we have trusted channels that we're going through we don't believe um we believe that uh financial caregivers children are looking for solutions and so we're working with um some of those groups um through think through like corporate benefits is providing my flock as a corporate benefit but we don't believe that older adults necessarily want to are on going out and looking for new fintech solutions right in in for their for themselves and so are, but we do believe they have trusted channels they're already working with. So think um, financial management channels. Think banking and um, the financial people they already have relationships. Think the insurance channel. And so our model is to work with those people who are also vested in um, the health care of older adults, but also the financial um, protection of older adults. And they are offering then as a solution to their clients. One of the things that we see which is interesting and all learning, by the way, because it's just getting customer feedback is they're using MyFlock as really an insurance policy. Um, people have spent their whole lives building their wealth, whatever that is, whether, you know, working to take care of their families, working to take care of their retirement. And then MyFlock can help protect that um, on a, in a real way, in a very simple um, easy lift way from being vulnerable to people who are wanting to take advantage of it. And I have, I have a story that I want to share, if that's okay with you, um, that is going on right now with my flock because we have a, we have a, a customer on the platform who came to us directly and she is a lovely woman. She's local. She's in Atlanta. She heard about what we were doing. She was married to her husband for 50 years, grew up in Atlanta. He um, passed away earlier this year, and she, he had done all the um, finances for them throughout their life. And she had no idea sort of about her finances, and he had worked very hard for a long time. And she very quickly became the um, victim of um, financial fraud. And to the um, tens, perhaps hundreds of thousands of dollars, we're not sure yet. And she didn't know what was happening. And we were called um, to come help. And we can't, obviously can't solve for all of those things because there were investment accounts involved in all, all of those things. But the conversation with her was, please make it stop. And um, it, it, you know, it's heartbreaking because she lost her husband and then she became this, you know, sort of this victim and saw what her husband had worked for and she had worked for her their whole lives taken away. And now she's concerned that she's going to have enough money um, to pay for her assisted living for the rest of her life. And it is those kinds of stories that say, one, it shouldn't be that way, but two, Boy, having these conversations early is so important because the world has changed and um, ha putting the safeguards in place and the insurance policies, if you will, in place um, as early as possible really can prevent some of these really unfortunate things from happening. So as my flock continues to grow, what, what does the future look like? What are your hopes and dreams? Hopes and dreams is to be a really key part of the conversation in changing the way we talk about money, changing the way, frankly, we think about aging. Um, we are very much a we company. We are all aging every day on this call, on this podcast. We're aging as we speak. It's a blessing. Um, we should celebrate it. 
And we want to be part of that and part of the financial component of it to take the stress and the anxieties out of the conversation. There's so much stress around money and there's so many different stresses. And we believe that the more we talk about it um, as families, as societies, as friends, it, it, it takes away the stress. Um, and so we want to be part of that conversation and we want to be part of the solution that, you know, in, in caregiving and we see caregiving as um, a wonderful thing. Um, it is a things that people go through at different stages of their lives. There's a wonderful uh, quote from Rosalind Carter, who's a leader in the caregiving space, and she has been forever. I'm not going to give it perfectly, but is there are four kinds of people in the world, people who either are going to need care, give care, um, become caregivers, or um, the, I don't remember what the fourth is, but it's all of us. And that is something we should celebrate. It's a wonderful thing. And we want to be part of that conversation and take the, take the stresses away so we can focus on the goodness. There's hard parts as well, not, not to be a Pollyanna, but focus on the goodness, focus on the caring for one another um, and take the stresses out as much as we can. So that's really sort of our, our dream. Okay, so I'm I'm just going to ask you just from some some concrete advice. So, when this airs, okay, we'll be after yeah. Thanksgiving. We'll be headed into the holidays, yep. Christmas, uh, New Year's, depending on what you celebrate at the end. Um, what are three good pieces That's of advice you you give me? Okay, yeah. So is is the yep. time right? And you know. What would you recommend I have with me before I open up the conversation? Um, before you open up the conversation, I would talk to whoever else is going to be in the conversation ahead of time, with, with whether it's your brothers and sisters, whoever it is, and agree that it is not going to be the one conversation, that it is going to be we're going to start the conversation and we're going to be very responsive to um, listening to the reaction because sometimes people go, well, we're, gonna, we're all in and we're gonna have the conversation now and it's gonna be done. Do not do that because you will shut down the conversation. And so having a game plan ahead of time um, and really thinking through the feelings and emotions of your parents is really important. Um, and being respectful. So that's sort of number one, have a game plan and don't think it's gonna be one and done. Um, the other thing is recognize your stresses in it. And so each one of us has emotions around it, recognize yours um, and listen. I think I've had, com I've had conversations with people where they say, I'm gonna make sure my mom continues to pay all the bills because it's good for her because if she's not doing it, then she's gonna, she's gonna lose her ability to do it. There is fear involved in finances for older adults, and there's nothing wrong with that fear. And so sort of recognizing those things and being, being thoughtful and saying, um, I hear you, what's the best solution for us is, is very important. So both parts of, both parts of listening and, and speaking in the communication is, inter is important. Um, and the, the last part is being very deliberate about avoiding any shaming, um, any victim blaming. And victim blaming in, in, um, in financial fraud and exploitation is really easy. Um, and it is, oh boy, how did you fall for that? Um, and like, don't do that. It Just don't do that. Because all of us will fall for something, all of us. Um, and there shouldn't be no shame involved. Um, and so being very conscious of those things is really important. And it's going to take time. Um, things don't. Ha things didn't happen overnight to get sort of to build up a, a financial history in families. It's not going to change overnight. So it's going to take time and be patient and and thoughtful and careful about it. Yeah. Well, um, Elizabeth, this was great to have you on here. Uh, Mary, uh, any last thoughts or uh, perspectives you'd want to share? I mean, I would just say that, wow, this is amazing. And I think all of us need to listen. And um, I love the no blaming, shaming, because that's, you, you've repeated that several times. So, um, you know, great information. And um, we can all start preparing for ourselves and for those of our loved ones and, and hope that um, we have 
you know, good outcomes. Yeah. Joseph, how about you? So the scammers get smarter and smarter. There's no question about that. Um, I've seen some crazy stuff there. So definitely something to be aware of. Um, I think the key point that I'm going to take away is the process. It's a conversation that's going to happen over a series of meetings, conversations, not just with one person, but with many. Yeah. Yeah. Laura, are you signing up for this service? (laughs) Oh, gosh. I Seriously, Elizabeth, I wish I had known about this about nine months ago when we went through it, but I'm sure we're um, going to be blessed to go through it again. So it's it's a wonderful thing to learn about and definitely going to be looking into it for our family. Right. So thank you. Yeah, I, I, I would just uh, echo Laura's sentiment. I wish I'd had it uh, about seven or eight yeah. years ago. It would have been a, a huge help. Um, what's the best way for people to find out more about your company? Yeah, so um, our website is um, www.myflock, M-Y-F-L-O-C dot com. Um, and right now, if you go there, you're going to you're going to see more about um, about the company. Shortly, you will be able to sign up for a MyFlock account um, from that page. And that should be coming um, by December 1st. Um, so you can actually sign up there. Um, and uh, happy to um, answer any questions. Love talking about it, obviously. Um, very much appreciate the conversation and um, believe that those sort of more we talk about these things together, um, the better off we'll all be. So um, I appreciate it. Great. Elizabeth, thanks so much. Joseph, Mary, Laura, thanks. And uh, thanks to all of your listeners. And join us again next week for another episode of Prime Life. <laughs>